Hello there, my name is Ismos, and today I want to show you how to make this Paramount Pictures animation uh, in Blender 2.8. Let me just have it play back again. Uh, you can see we have, yeah, so this is the Paramount Pictures uh, title sequence. Uh, you can see we have the stars, we make a circle, and then we have uh, the title. And uh, this text here is uh, editable, so if you're a Patreon, you can request the project files. You can find the project files on Patreon and uh, make uh, the project yours and render it out as your own so i uh, can see what we have and just want to show you that uh, the text is editable uh, you can see now i changed it to subscribe but uh, you can also which by the way you should do if uh, you are new here and uh, put it make it say like or whatever you want to make it say let's see we have the stars and now we follow the reflections are uh, the reflections here are not the best uh, because uh, we're using EV here to render. So if you're using cycles to render this out, it will look even better. Uh, but uh, my PC can't handle that. Uh, so you can also, in the original Paramount Pictures animation, uh, you have some ripples. Uh, the water makes some ripples uh, on these. Sorry, the stars makes some ripples as on the water as they touch it. And uh, they are there, except that our lighting here is not, it's not very bright to see that. So let me just increase the exposure just a bit so that you can see uh, that uh, we have some ripples there, as you can see. So when the stars touch the water, you see some ripples. I need to make them more pronounced, uh, but uh, they are there. As you can see, I bring back this yeah so let's talk about this uh, so if you want to watch the entire time lapse as uh, from start to finish so if you want to, sorry if you want to watch the entire process of uh, making this uh, from start to finish you can go to my second channel i'll be uh, the link is in the description and you can watch the entire process from start to finish as this is going to just this is going to be a simple overview of uh, the entire process so yeah, let's get into it. So let's begin with uh, with what? With uh, the mountains. So let me isolate uh, this main one. Maybe also, actually no. So I didn't want to sculpt to, to, to sculpt anything because that would take a lot of time and we had a lot of uh, mountains to do. So what I did is uh, I went to Google and searched for, for height maps, for mountain height maps and uh, let me sh hopefully I don't show you anything here that I shouldn't be showing. So if you go to Google and search for mountain height maps, height maps, uh, they should give you these uh, height map or back maps uh, images uh, that you can use for for mountains. And uh, this is exactly what I use. Uh, I think so. This here. Uh, so actually says this is this here and uh, you can see the two peaks here this one and here uh, these two here so to do to use this I use the multi resolution modifier uh, to have to give the geometry more subdivisions uh, so that we can capture more details and uh, also use a displacement modifier with a texture Im image texture and uh, the image texture is our mountain height map and uh, that gives us this information so without any sculpting you can just start with a plane and you can see without this displacement this is a simple plane uh, then I add the multi resolution to make it more subdivided and then add the displacement modifier and uh, I get that detail okay it's a bit laggy here actually this looks very nice from this angle I like it anyway so uh, I just needed one mountain uh, so uh, then I duplicated them and positioned them uh, to align with uh, the reference image I'm having here uh, the paramount reference image uh, to have smaller mountains in the background and everything like that and uh, to make it look like uh, this is really far uh, to make the background uh, more separated from the foreground, I added this uh, this a 
actually I think it should have been around this side. I used this uh, noise, this uh, object here, this plane, and give gave it a uh, gave it a principal volume, just so I can separate the background element mountains from the foreground uh, mountains. As you can see, gives it that haze uh, effect, which makes it a fog effect, which makes the background separate from the foreground. Uh, then. Uh, for the materials of the mountain, uh, it's very, very simple as well. Let me just show you here. I didn't have any large textures, uh, so what I did is uh, I blended different uh, textures. So you can see, first I have this, which I blend using the uh, blend modifier, sorry, the blend node. I blended with this and uh, got that blended it with this uh, to add in some detail uh, to the mountain to get that use that as a bump map and a roughness map and uh, also the as the base color uh, but I uh, can see as the, this mountain has some sides some snow on the opposite on the other side so to do that I used um, for, uh, yeah, to create this now, what I did is uh, I created two materials, one for the rocks and another one for the ice surface, which is basically just uh, our noise map uh, set, pushed into the roughness node uh, to have those specs. And then to mask out uh, the, the snow from the rocks, what I did is uh, I created this mask here, which basically uses a geometry node uh, from the tangent output and pass that through our car ramp to get a little bit of contrast and uh, a power node to make it more pronounced and you can already see uh, the kind of details we're getting and I uh, use that as a mask node uh, for a mix shader mixing the snow with the uh, with, uh, with the rocks which gave me exactly what you see on screen So all the other mountains use the same thing, uh, they use the same setup, the same uh, displacement uh, texture and a different, and the same material. Uh, what I'm just, the, the only difference I, I'm having here, I have quite a few mountains, as you can see. Uh, it's just, I'm, I'm either scaling them up or scaling them down so that they, are, they look a bit flatter and uh, maybe make, make them really wide and uh, positioning them way far from the camera. And uh, you can see without the fog, atmosphere the background is not really separated from the foreground so when I bring that back hmm. yeah I can see now actually we are we, here we were just seeing mostly uh, the foreground elements that are from yeah here you can see I mean just without the fog you can see we, you don't really get that separation but uh, when we bring that back we get that. I also tried to match the lighting uh, by adding a sunlight uh, from this direction so that I can illuminate this side of the of the mountain. And uh, I used this image as the background image. Nothing fancy about it. It's just uh, an image connected. This cloud image connected to the uh, to the emission map and the base color, and that's it. And uh, then, then again, you can just watch the time lapse to see all of these parts as I'm putting them together. Uh, so then, yeah, then for the water, oh, it's also very, very, very simple. It's just a simple material uh, with a metallic surface. You can see it's very, very reflective. And to make it, to make, to add in those small ripples, I just use an image I got from Google this uh, caustic or swimming pool uh, water image but uh, it isn't it, it doesn't even come out that much in the final view because my lighting lighting is a bit dark so it doesn't matter that much you, you can just make the surface really reflective and uh, to get really good reflections I had to make it metallic so that is uh, uh, really reflective then yeah I wanted uh, in the original Paramount uh, animation, there is some clouds in with uh, in 
different areas. Uh, so I did that by adding uh, these plain images, very simple images, very simple setup. Uh, so because I wanted uh, these clouds uh, to match the lighting in our scene, what I did is uh, I made sure that uh, I used a translucent shader and uh, mix with a transparent shader so that these these clouds are affected by light so if for example this here this cloud here if i move it in the shadow area you see it also it gets affected by the shadow so it's affected by the light because i have it as a translucent material and uh, that helps uh helps it interact with light and shadow so very nicely uh, so uh that's it uh, so i put those in different areas and uh, yeah that's mostly the most complicated things and you can see a sun in the background there uh, that is very simple uh, what I did I used a sphere like this and I uh, gave it a very high emissive value and uh, turned on bloom uh, to make it have that bloomish effect and then, 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 let's see, let's see, let's see, uh, so, yeah, now we can go to the animation of the stars, so, uh, to animate the stars, I parented them to this empty, which is using a follow path constraint, uh, if you don't know how follow path constraints work, you can just go to my second, uh, to, you can go to the video sections of, of this channel and uh, watch the latest video I've done. Uh, it's about that. So this follow path uh, tutorial here should be helpful. Uh, basically what it does, you just have the empty. You just give it a follow path uh, constraint and uh, it will follow uh, the path you draw. And you can see this path just creates uh, the this kind of loop around the mountain to have that. So then I parented uh, about three stars onto that empty and I gave them a slight rotation animation. And uh, because this, they're parented to this uh, empty, they just follow that all the way and uh, the camera just follows it. Uh, so if you watch the original uh, Paramount image, you start off, the camera starts off by looking into the reflection. So the animation is a bit confusing there. It's, yeah, so, it's kind of playing tricks on you so uh, that's what i was trying to go for uh, i start off flipping the camera back uh, upside down so that i'm looking at the reflections mostly and uh, then uh, the camera follows the stars and uh, then it corrects uh, its uh, rotation now for this ripple effect as the stars move through the uh, the, the liquid you can see the, that ripple effect. Uh, it's, uh, I'm using dynamic painting under this uh, object here. This plane is also using the same reflective material as the other part of the plane, but I didn't want to simulate uh, the entire plane because that would take a lot of uh, computation power and uh, you need a few sub, quite a number of subdivisions uh, to get good ripples. Uh, that's why I only uh, created a simple mesh where the stars we are going to uh, touch so that I can minimize on uh, the computation power and the amount of uh, polygons I would have to use. Uh, then, yeah, so I'm using dynamic painting here, uh, but uh, instead of using uh, uh, using displacement, you just use wave, waves. And uh, I also have a good story about using that. So you can just search for top channel one on one, top channel one on one dynamic painting mm, painting and uh, it should get you to that video where I made uh, this uh, this uh, this bot here going on the surface so this is exact this is the same concept I'm using uh, for this uh, uh, here so if you want to watch a detailed uh, tutorial about that, you can watch that. Uh, then what else? What else? Yeah, so uh, because I only had three stars here, 
and uh, I tried animating them to follow this path. Uh, they could do it, but uh, it was a lot of work. So what I decided is uh, at around here, uh, the stars are those three main stars that we follow from this area are kind of obscured by the lighting and the shadows of the mountain. So you can't really see what's going on. So what I did around there, uh, let me see if I can find them. So there are these stars. So what I do around there, I scale them really low to about to a point where you can't see them in through the screen and then switch, switch them out for these other stars for an array of stars that I just created here. So you can see at around here, it's really hard to tell where the stars are. So I scale them down so that they are invisible, so that they are, so that they disappear out, out of the scene. And uh, then I switch them out for these, for this star here with a few settings, with an array. Uh, basically what it does is uh, it replicates this, uh, yeah, it's an array of stars and uh, I'm unmating the array count here. So you can see it starts off at one. So that, because if I didn't unmate that, you would see the array, the duplicates before I want you to see them. So as the camera comes into, comes here, then uh, the array counts up uh, so that they are all there. And uh, then I'm using a curve deformer for this object, uh, so that is, so that it can follow on, so that it can follow that curve and uh, animate that on the y axis. You can see this in the time lapse. So then you have uh, the star. Let me just re edit this back. To hmm? channel one on one. I think I would have to scale this down. Yeah, so you have the stars and uh, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? I think that's it for the most part. Everything else that I've not explained. Uh, maybe another thing I did is I added in these smaller details here, which is basically using the same uh, modifiers as this mountain and the same material, but I switched out uh, the texture here so that I have uh, some small rocks below uh, the mountain. And I think you can use this for different scenes if you wanted. And I think these clouds also added some good, make things look even better. So yeah, that's it. Uh, the time-lapse is going to be available on my second channel. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.